issue to this Briggs and Stratton. And I'm going to kind of get down on the ground here. I got a light so it's not so shadowy. But uh, what we have here, it is the Briggs and Stratton SL1500. And 1500 is meaningless because it's really 1200 watts peak and 1000 uh, continuous. So it's 100% copper wire. I don't know if all of them are 100% copper wire, but this Briggs and Stratton is. I actually bought this at Belmont uh, Hardware in Cebu City, and the price was about twelve thousand. And uh, but a week before, or two weeks before I bought it, it was actually on sale for ten percent off. So it, you could have got it down to almost ten thousand uh, and some change. Uh, but uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted one this size or not. I thought I wanted a 2,000 watt one, but after considering what my load is here, just to run the basic house stuff, lights and fans and refrigerator, uh, this was really going to do the trick without, you know, spending almost double the money. So, uh, but what I'll show you is what we got here we got you know of course the on off switch here you turn this to run before you start it it is a pull start right here here's the handle for the pull start uh, when we unboxed it put some gas in it and oil be sure to put oil before you start it or you'll destroy the engine uh, it uh, Put the choke on, pulled it one time, started right up, very first time, and it was easy to pull. It's a 98 cc in engine, so right at 100 uh, cc's. Uh, it's got the voltmeter for your AC output. Uh, it's got kind of like a weather cover here for your uh, uh, AC connection, and it comes with the plug that goes in here. You just have to wire it to some wire make an extension cord or something like that it's got an AC breaker in case you over you know draw too much current and it's got a DC breaker it also has a DC uh, output here and it comes with a plug that plugs into this you notice it's kind of like a v-shaped uh, blades here okay so that's a DC plug and it comes with two uh, uh, clips, you know, like a battery, uh, you know, like booster cable type clamps uh, on the other end of this cable here. And you can charge batteries with this. The output was about 15 volts, so it's kind of high, so uh, be careful uh, charging batteries because you can, with 15 volts, uh, it's like I said, it's, it's a little bit high and you don't want to overcharge like that. Uh, here's the engine, the generator specs here. We got uh, 230 volts, 4.35 amps, 1,000 watts is the rated, that's the continuous. DC's output is 12 volts, DC current, amps is 8.3. And then your maximum output or surge is 1,200 watts. It's a single phase, 3,600 RPM, and it's 60 cycles. Uh, it is a Briggs and Stratton, Stratton uh, design, and it is built in China. Now you can get a lot of Chinese generators and that all over the Philippines. Uh, however, uh, they're built to whatever the Chinese company specs are. Well, this is Briggs and Stratton, so it's an American company, and their standards, uh, at least. Uh, here in the Philippines, uh, th this is a, um, uh, everybody thinks this is a much better generator, and actually it was, there's another generator, this is 98 cc's, another one was, was uh, 93 cc, just some Chinese off-brand, and uh, it didn't have the DC output here, the 12 volt for you to charge batteries with, you could run things off of here too, because you got eight, 8 amps of DC current uh, here. Um, this is, by the way, a ground. If you need to ground your uh, AC to something, you can ground it here. Uh, because here we just use two wire, and so there's no real ground there. There's just a, a, a power and a neutral. 
So anyway, um, this is a. Uh, oh, and, and back to the uh, off-brand that was 93 cc's. This is 98. Uh, this one, uh, I think that one was like a 900 watt. And this is a thousand. And the Chinese one, the cheap Chinese one, cost about 4,000 pesos more, about 80 bucks more. So that didn't make any sense at all but uh, you know like I said I got the Briggs and Stratton one I also have a Briggs and Stratton weed whacker uh, that I just beat to death when I because I uh, weed whacked 1500 uh, well actually 1350 square meters of land uh, in in a day uh, and so uh, I run it really hard and I've had it three years and it works great no, no problems at all just you, you know changing the line and uh, putting uh, that one is two stroke this is four stroke and supposedly this is a five liter gas tank and it's I was told it'll run about one hour per liter so you got about five hours of running time on here um, and uh, supposedly you have to let these cool down sometimes you, I don't know if you can really run them continuous I I didn't see that in the book their manual is okay as far as describing what buttons and switches and gauges and stuff are, uh, but um, it doesn't really uh, give you uh, as much detail as you might want. But anyway, it's a nice little generator. I paid roughly 12,000 pesos for that. That's about, it actually gave me a discount because I know the manager there and she's really nice and uh, extremely helpful. Her name is um, uh, Vivian. She's just the best. I mean, you need something, and if it's in their warehouse, because all the sales folks, if you ask them if they have some, something, they'll say out of stock, uh, and they won't make any effort to find it. And you go ask her, and she'll go, well, we're out of stock here, but let me check. And she'll go check on the computer, and she'll have it there the next day for you if it's in their warehouse. It also has a gas gauge too, so that's kind of handy because as it runs, you can uh, you can see this is basically em empty and on this side is full, and, and it runs on just un unleaded gas. Uh, it'll run on 10% uh, ethanol. That's okay. It won't run on E85 or E15, so uh, you know don't try that. You got your air breather here. It's relatively quiet too. Now I, I'm not going to start it up right now because uh, I'm in my house and it, outside it's raining uh, but it's relatively quiet it's it's you, you know for a generator you usually think you're going to make a lot of noise and this one doesn't uh, it's 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 just about right so anyway if you need a generator that'll run about a thousand watts continuously uh, I'd certainly recommend this guy and again put some wheels on on it so that you can you know roll it around you don't have to pick up a you know 60 pound generator to go from wherever you store it to wherever you, you know outdoors you can't run these indoors obviously because of exhaust fumes you'll kill yourself or who's ever in the house uh, so anyway that is uh, kind of the rundown on this uh, easily portable 1000 watt continuous electric generator 230 volts and with a 12 volt uh, battery charging or you can run things again off of the 12 volts whatever you have you have a boat or something like that and you want to run uh, lights uh, I've seen guys going uh, tuna fishing and have a 300 watt uh, LED it's a giant light and they drop it down in the ocean they actually drop it down deep you know 60 70 meters or roughly uh, how deep do they do it? Maybe 30, 40 feet actually uh, deep and uh, it, it attracts the dog tooth tuna and they uh, they fish but they have a generator on the boat you, you know to run that light plus all of the deck lights so you, you know if you had 12 volt lighting uh, you could run it or if you had 230 volt lighting you could run that too so either way uh, it's a handy little guy uh, with plenty of power you know for lightweight uh, type work so we will be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island bye for now Everybody.
just wanted to show you, I, I got a new generator, uh, and the problem with generators are that the smaller ones, even though they're heavy, this is about 60 to 80 pounds, uh, they don't have any wheels. And so what I did is uh, I'm going to put wheels on it, see like that? And then you can just roll it around, you don't have to pick this thing up. Um, and uh, what I'm using here is these electric, or kind of, well, that one's kind of mangled. I actually had to drill them out because they didn't fit right. But I'm just using just like a standard conduit clamp, you know, where your electrical conduit would go through here, or if you had half inch plumbing pipe or something like that, or three quarter inch, uh, it would go through here. And then I'm clamping that on to one of these caster wheels like that and I'm having to wallow out these holes because the distance between here and here is too short and so I have to get my drill and kind of push against this hole and, and, and uh, elongate it going towards the corners the two corners uh, and then I also have to drill elongate this hole closer to the metal I think but what I'll probably do with well I've already done it so uh, and then uh, I just clamp this on to the bar as you see right here just because it fits nicely there and then bolt that through the two corners of the wheel and all I have to do is just get the holes to match up so basically that's why I'm uh, elongating these holes I've got this one done I don't know, it doesn't look too weird, but uh, uh, clamp down great, you know, we got it done, uh, and it's on, so we only got three more to go, and then this bad boy will just roll around, and uh, I guess if you want to keep it from vibrating around, I don't know what's going to happen when it runs, if it runs so smooth, it'll just sit there, or, or if it'll try to, you know, vibrate and try to cut rolling around. Uh, but you know we'll be able to chalk these wheels uh, somehow and uh, you know or just block it up like that if we want to get a couple of wooden blocks and lean it slide them under there and have it set on that while uh, it runs but just you know because when you're storing it it's inside your house or inside your garage or inside somewhere you know and when you're running it well then it's out outside so you have to move it from inside to outside so basically uh, I don't want to pick this thing up uh, 80 pounds and be you know hauling it everywhere uh, that I go and so I'll just uh, grab it the handle here and just roll it out there and roll it back whenever I'm done so anyway we will uh, finish uh, drilling out those corners and uh, elongating those on the caster because this is really the distance between here and and here that uh, is too short so we'll elongate those and then we'll uh, pop it on there and we'll be done anyway uh, also this is 96 pesos so about two bucks a little bit less than two bucks buck 80 and then these little guys here were 139 pesos and I think I got maybe eight maybe eight of these and then uh, the bolts right here and we get uh, how many bolts these are I think quarter inch bolts roughly and uh, there's actually a bug in in my shoe uh, so <laughs> it was tickling my feet these are quarter inch bolts but they're only like three quarters inch long or so because um, that's all that you need. And it comes with the nut and that, and um, it is 50 pesos, one dollar. So basically, for your uh, wheels, they're two dollars each, so that's eight dollars. And for two packages of these, that's two more dollars, so that's ten dollars. And then one thirty, well, I might as well say one forty, one thirty-nine seventy-five. That's, we'll say that's three dollars so that's thirteen dollars and you got wheels on your uh, generator and a little bit of drilling
So we will be back. I'm going to you know, finish these up. And then once it's all on wheels, I'll kind of roll it around for you and see you how, show you how well it works. And we'll be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now. All right, everybody. As you can see, when I drill these uh, holes out here to elongate them so that I could put the bolt in closer uh, so that it would match up with the, with the coaster uh, holes uh, here, and I had to elongate these too. You can see where I kind of wallowed them out with the drill bit to, so they'll fit. But when you do this uh, electrical conduit bracket, bracket, you can see that it's uh, bent. It. So you can just take your pliers and bend them back straight. That's it. So it's no big deal. Just get it straight and voila. Now it's almost straight. Maybe a little bit more that way. pretty good to me okay so we're gonna uh, clamp this guy here on to and there's a little sharp right, right there I kind of want to break off and another one right in here from just drooling kind of made some little sh sharp edges they're trying to get those down so they don't scratch the metal because if you scratch the metal or scratch the paint you're going to get some rust because I mean we're right at the beach here so you know you're going to get a lot of salt air and stuff and it's going to try to rust all your work so you don't want any sharp spots on there that, uh, that might uh, scratch the paint again and, and cause it to rust so okay I think we're good to go. So we got to just put this this guy here, right there, like that. And then, because this caster has to turn, you don't want to put your bolt like this, obviously, because the caster is going to hit it. See, so you have to put your bolt from the bottom side up, and the caster can clear it and spin as much as it wants. And then the nut goes on the top here. So. We're going to put that nut on here real quick. <coughs> Stick it through this hole right here. Spin it on. Now that, you know, now that we got every all the holes drilled out, elongated and, and, and that, we got that I'm done. I've got this dropped to the wayside. I'll get much more bolts and nuts. the other side so it's gonna it goes like this it goes like this and uh, put it push that down slightly there we go see it lines up nicely and then we go right through here and put this nut on before I elongated all these holes there wasn't enough space between the bolt and the bracket between this bolt and this bracket for the, for the nut to go on. So that's why I had to elongate those um, and also to match up to the uh, uh, the width of these. I had to elongate the caster bolts. So all I have to do now is just tighten these guys down and then go on to my next one. I've already pre-drilled and uh, everything and elongated all the holes so all I have to do is just like I said tighten these down so I won't bore you with that part and we will be back with more from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye, bye for now. Alright everybody we got all the wheels mounted and as you can see it's just spin it around any direction you want the wheels roll it goes here it goes there whatever you want so it's much easier to roll because i'm doing it just with my finger one hand and uh, my wrist here uh, moving this wherever i want it to go and uh, all you got to do like it says just put a couple of casters on here uh, with a little uh, some kind of a clamp and uh, voila you don't have to uh, push around a um, 40 
kilo or 80 pound generator or more. I mean, this is this is a small one here. This is 50, uh, well, it says 1500, but it's really 1200 watt peak and 1000 watt continuous. And uh, it's about 80 pounds. And so uh, I don't I don't have to uh, do anything but just grab hold of it and roll it over to where I want it. Start it up and voila, we got power and uh, no back breaking uh, work. And it just took, I don't know, one hour at the most really to, and that's only because I had to drill out uh, these clamps and you know, so that they would, uh, so the bolt holes would line up and match up with the uh, caster holes. And other than that, it's a piece of cake. So anyway, that's uh, how you get your uh, generator on wheels. And we'll be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island. We're rolling our generators all over the place. Bye for now.